of a polemical agenda against religion. They tend to read the life of Jesus in the light of their political struggle against religion in the present. They tend to attack the virgin birth and see that the main evidence against Jesus being a real historical feat. Um, and see that as the main historical figure. The rest of Jesus' life is superficially treated only to make a political point against religion in the present. This can hardly be seen as fair, objective, historical treatment of the life of Jesus. Then we have the Bayes theorem. Uh, in the debate, James White asked Dominic Crossan about bias in historical method. Dominic Crossan replied, we have presuppositions, but we also have data. That's in the resurrection debate, Crossan and Borg versus White and Renehan. This debate took place on board ship 2005 in the Gulf of Alaska. You can see it on YouTube channel Alaska 1689. Crossan implied that we can get the historical data even with bias. Uh, just an aside though, it's interesting that Dominic well, even in his work, if you look at uh, a book called The Cambridge Studies, Cambridge Companion to Jesus, in the first chapter, Dr. Evans writes an article, and there he critiques Dominic Crossan, showing that Dominic Crossan, when he says that Jesus was a Sionic philosopher, if you look at the Galilean architecture, Roman and Greek architecture in, Gal in, in the area of Galilee, Crossan would say that shows that there was Sionic teaching and ideas, and Jesus was a Sionic philosopher. Uh, wandering from a peasant village. But all the evidence indicates, even though they were Greek and Roman architecture, that the people there were thoroughly Jewish. All the archaeological evidence for funerals, uh, for burials, all reveal a Jewish culture. So, in other words, Dominic Crossan is not as objective as he even thinks. The point what I'm getting at is most scholars are not aware, even historians and even historical Jesus experts are not aware and as honest as they need to be about their bias. How are they shaping, how are our presuppositions shaping the material that we look at? What steps have we taken to make sure that our presuppositions are not blinding our interpretation of the facts? Have we consistently looked at our presuppositions to see if our presuppositions are consistent? Because not all presuppositions are accurate. As we've looked at the historical Jesus studies and the New Atheists, we all have to be more conscious of our bias, more honest and upfront about it, or we'll go around in circles confirming what we want to believe rather than letting the evidence speak for itself. Scholars try to trick the public into thinking they are more objective than they are. An example is the scholar who used Bay theorem, the atheist Dr. Richard Carrier, and there are Christians who've done the same, using the Bay theorem as if this is an objective way to show that Christianity, uh, that atheism is correct in its interpretation of Jesus. This theorem tries to show the probability of each set of probable causes for an absurd outcome can be logically uh, ascertained from knowledge of the probability of each cause and the conditional probability of the um, understanding of the outcome of each cause. To be fair, it must also be noted that evangelical scholars have also used the Bayes theorem to prove their case for the resurrection. I have to say that again. But the Bayes theorem is not used by any known historian. Uh, it's not used by any reputable historian, really. Or if it is, it's very rare. Mo most historians don't use it. What this argument is from the Bayes theorem is an argument from um, scientism. Susan Hack, an atheist, has given a great lecture in warning us about using science as some authority to give our ideas more kudos than in reality. Science does not, act, does not actually substantiate but remains neutral on the resurrection of Christ. 
If you look at Susan Hack's Six Signs of Scientism, Dr. Hack's talk at the, Ro at the Rotman Institute of Philosophy at the University of Western Ontario on January the 7th, 2011, engages scientism, the view that natural science is the most authoritative way of looking at the world interpretations of life. What I'm trying to say is the atheists like Richard Carrier, who would try and use some kind of scientific basis to critique the resurrection, i.e. use the base theorem, it's only a form of scientism, it's only a form of trying to use science as an authority, but the base theorem is not actually scientific in terms of historical inquiry, it's very subjective. Um, David Bartholomew, uh, a, a, a statistician, uh, in page 117 of The Resurrection of Jesus in Mike Lacona's IVP book, writes, the great difficulty applying the theory is that it's often not at all clear what value should be given to the prior probability. David Bartholomew says, thus the base theorem is subjective. Page 117, Lacona. The Resurrection of Jesus. Dr. McClough says virtually no historian uses it. Page 117 in uh, Lacona's book, Resurrection of Jesus. Dr. Tucker says it is clear how Bayes' theorem can be worked. It is unclear how Bayes' theorem can be worked out in practice. Page 117, Resurrection of Jesus. So, We've got to acknowledge that we have presuppositions. We've got to acknowledge that we come to the historical information with pre-ideas. Now, does that mean to say that if all these history of all these scholars shows that they're biased, does that mean that we can't get to historical facts or information? No. What it means is that we have to be aware of whether our presuppositions are consistent and the best presuppositions and we have to also try to make sh limit our presuppositions in the evaluation of the facts to be honest and fair the atheist position generally not all atheists but the atheists that we dealt with here the Sam Harris and Dawkins and on Frey and Hitchens would see reality as materialistic. They would all be committed to evolution. These are their presuppositions. Now is that consistent for historical inquiry? If we believe in evolution, then there is no meaning ultimate to life. There is no general pattern to history. So why would we try to look at history for a pattern, history for a meaning, if our own intellectual foundation doesn't provide that. Our presupposition is in conflict. There is a, a, a disparity between our presupposition and the actual historical inquiry. The Christian position says that history has a purpose and the Christian position has the uh, presupposition that reality is real and that when we investigate it we can come to knowledge so it is a basis for objective knowledge so the actually um, the Christian presupposition actually is the better presupposition to go and do history than an atheist position or a skeptical position now this because all as atheism is, is an absence of belief due to a lack of evidence. But what the atheist doesn't realize is that that doesn't wash because one has to deconstruct the language that the atheist is using. That requires intellectual tools of philosophy, linguistics. It's not enough, it's not as simple as to say, I don't believe in God due to a lack of evidence. In other words, the point is that the atheist, <coughs> whether they like it or not, will have presuppositions that impinge on their understanding of reality 
and that impinge on whether their presuppositions are consistent in the historical task. So there has to be a discussion on the table about the atheist presupposition and the Christian presupposition. Other presuppositions that uh, play for the Christian is the Bible. For the Christian, the Bible is the Word of God. The Old Testament is the outline to the New Testament, etc. For the Christian presupposition, there is a belief in God, the Creator. For the atheist, there's often a a